Ah, uh, it is summer. I'm holding a sack of carrots. Let's draw some traditional industrial design stuff. Let me get started with the drawing materials first. Uh, super cheap copy paper, just A3 size. You can get A4 as well, depending what you feel more comfortable with. Don't go for expensive stuff, especially when you're learning. It's not really necessary. As for the pencils, and yeah, you can see pencils. I am going to stick with pencils instead of my trusty fine liner this time around. I'm just taking uh, Staedtler and Brunzel if I pronounce them correctly, I, I don't know. I think, yeah, Staedtler is German, Brunzel is Dutch. So these are the two relatively most common uh, pencils. And as you can see, I like to stick with HB. Sometimes I go towards B, but um, I think HB is fine. And I also have a black uh, colored pencil. This is also from a Brunzel set. I can show you the set as well, relatively cheap i don't know if it is cheap or not 14 euros uh, and this will be just in the end to make things a little bit darker so yeah this is this is all that i'm using and i am also using a faber castell um castell i don't know which country this is from but it's like a kneadable thing and this is getting old so i oh let me show you so this is getting old and i have a replacement for it which is the cheaper version koinor uh, I will probably plug this one in there soon, but it still can do a little bit. Uh, I will try. Let me pick it up. I will try not to erase, just because I like not to erase. Uh, and let's uh, let's see how we can get started here. Okay, I chose an angle grinder. I will push it in somewhere here. You will see it or here. I think here is a better space for it, but. Uh, first of all, I just do a very rough skeleton of, of what I want to draw and I try to place it already in perspective. So I, I know I have two perspective lines. One is coming this way and it's angling, of course, and the other one is this and there's much less angle to be found there. Uh, and then we're going to have the bigger body that has all the mechanical elements in it and then we're going to have the handle right there and then we are going to have a sort of uh, well not sort of but a battery and that's where the battery will be uh, and i don't want to be too loose but it's okay to be loose uh, let me also so because i do have a sweaty hand i like to just keep some sort of dirty paper and keep my hand on it otherwise you can also use a smudge guard whichever works better for you. And I'm just trying to follow the lines here, uh, make my basic shapes, you know, me and my love for boxes. So I just always make sure I draw through my shapes. I do the roundings once my um, basic shapes are there. So those will come all a little bit later as well. So I indicated that I will want my ellipses to go through here. So I just make sure that I add uh, an axis on which I can put the rest of my ellipses. So this is where my big ellipse will be. And then this we will have also our uh, guard shin protector thing. Uh, another axis will be this one. Uh, let me rotate it a bit for our other handle because we of course have two handles. And let me just do the ellipses there, connect them. And I said, I'm, I'm still relatively loose here. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of loose lines throughout this drawing. I would say never be afraid. I keep on saying this, but don't be afraid to rotate your piece of paper just because you always have a direction that your hand is much more comfortable with. I'm going to draw through this one as well, just to make sure that this handle is positioned correctly. So I'm going to do that very lightly. So this is where my handle should be. And that see-through part is not going to be uh, that important. I do like to jump from one part to the other, just to make sure that my eye stays a little bit, well, relatively fresh. And that way it's easier to recognize mistakes if you have not been looking 
at a particular part of your image for the longest time. Just to clarify for myself, I use further construction lines. And especially if you're not erasing, these lines will slowly start building up. And that's why I also have that uh, uh, black pencil from the color colored pencil set, just because I know I will probably have to come back again here with uh, with that one this is a moment where i'm erasing just because i had an idea there but it is not working now to the not fun part which is the ellipses as i I know most everybody doesn't enjoy ellipses, trust me, I'm among you as well. It is not easy to control. And I usually, my technique is that I, I put down a million of them and I just hope that one of them reads better than the rest. So let's see. Something that I, I don't like here that I just did is that I have almost a tangent here and that I do not want. So maybe I'll just bring this whole line a bit lower. Good thing about pencil again, if you really make a mistake you can erase, which you do not have the luxury on if you're working with fine liners or pens. Okay, I'll bring in my black pencil. It's mostly the, the lower lines that I want a little bit darkened. Some of the overlapping lines, like here, I want to make sure that this is darker. And then of course the handle. I decided to sharpen my black pencil just a little bit and make sure to go into these nooks and create that little v-shape there uh, it's of course it's exaggerated but it will um, showcase the fact that we have a separation of the shape there much much better and we can do the same thing here I'm just gonna press this v a little bit there and then it's sort of, and you can also make the line that's closer to your bit darker. 
there we go and with that you know that you have that separation there now this line needs to be a little bit stronger as well This should be the highlighted area, so that will get definitely a bit more light. So I will leave that white for now. Come in, do the cross hatching on the rest. Same on the upper area. I like to have a little bit of fading in and out, so I always like to have the ends a bit darker so here as well this is a bit more in shadow and this i will add a bit more in shadow that's just mostly a stylistic choice not really necessary to do it that way this area is in highlight and then we will have a little bit of reflective highlight there Just to give it a little bit of texture, I can do like a loose cross hatch on this one because these discs are usually a bit darker. And then if you want to give it a grit, you can also go from a different direction and then you will have a more grittier sort of, not paper, but surface for sure. Uh, one thing you can do is usually before you have a bend like this, you have a saturation of color and a value as well. It's a little bit darker there, so you can, you can make sure to add a little bit of value there. Same here, same there, same there. It's up to you how much uh, patience you have and how much you want to invest into that. This I find a bit too sharp. It's never too late to round things a little bit here as well. Like even though the, we have a sharp edge here, I just bring it in there and it will give you the illusion of it being a bit more rounded than it was in the beginning. Uh, you can erase a little bit here just to take away the interior lines, some of the construction lines if you want to. Uh, really not necessary. And for the final part of the video, I just continue with sharpening my lines and I also add a little bit of shading here and there and add a couple of design elements just, just to bring everything a little bit together. I make sure to also add one final section line in the front that will bring sort of the whole shape together. And that's sort of it. This is what I do when I do uh, pencil sketches. This is quite interesting for me because it's been a while since, uh, since I drew with pencil. And I think black pencil, or at least the color pencil, I haven't used since uh, university. That's where we used this the last time. But it, it was really fun. And I just wanted to show you, yeah, you really do not need any sort of specific equipment or expensive equipment just to learn how to draw. You really just need a pencil and a paper and maybe an eraser. And there you go. You just have to do the exercises from there on. And with that, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something new from it, or at least that you enjoyed it. Hit that like button or the dislike button, but most importantly, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought of the video. Tell me what sort of uh, power tools you like to draw, or what sort of tools you have problems with drawing. Maybe we can talk about it in an upcoming video. Either way, leave me a comment. If you want to support me, there's a Gumroad link and also a coffee link in the description down below. But the most important thing is that you guys have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.